Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Is everyone okay? Yeah. How's everyone feeling today? today? <laughs> Pretty good? <laughs> Pretty excited. <laughs> I heard you sing this now. It's not singing. It's like beatboxing. It's very good. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty excited to be here today, uh, to be with you guys. Uh, now this is my first time to be talking with TEDx and uh, to all the students. So today I'm going to talk to you about punk rock music, underground, hardcore, metalcore. So I know you guys have been listening to this kind of music, right? So I want to ask you, what do you think when I mention about punk? Heavy metal, hardcore music? Um, yeah, what do you think about it? Any any kind of uh, what what's your opinions? Any opinions about it? Drugs, Drugs. guys with eyeliners. Yeah, metal. That is metal. <laughs> and we have emos. That. So what else? What else do you think? What? Pizza. <laughs> Guitar. Doctor Martin. So lots of. Um, you know, uh, things that we've been thinking, what is this? What is this in the hardcore punk scene? What is so popular? What is so significant about it? So, loud noise, violent, tattoos, drugs, you know, this is, this is not just the uh, general public misconceptions to what they are. And some of it are true, some of it are not true. So I'm going to tell you, the scene, you know, I've been living for almost 18 years now. I've been going, uh, playing to almost uh, all around Malaysia, all around the world. I travel, I met a lot, a lot of bands, lots of scene, lots of kids, so I travel. And they are not so bad because we're doing something that is differently from the normal band. We are making a change. We're not singing about, um, you know, singing about girls getting drunk getting laid, that kind of stuff. But we're singing differently. We sing about change, stop the war, you know, stop racism, you know, uh, animal liberation, human liberation. This is what we sing uh, when we are on stage. Okay, so I got into punk when I was 14 years old, influenced by ideas of anarchism. You know, anti-establishment, <laughs> liberalism, and communism. So this is why I grew up. I was 14 years old. I, I read about this in a, in a magazine, in a small magazine that was written by people overseas from, uh, from European countries. They wrote about, um, you know, anarchism, anti-establishment, anti-capitalism, this kind of th stuff that we read when we were in school. So this is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, different from the normal kids that, you know, in, in the Malaysia scene. So I smoke, I drink, and getting high, and I thought it was cool to do, because everyone was doing it. So I just, I was one in the crowd, I just want to follow these this boys. I was, I was a fool, you know. But that is not, that is not a wrong decision that I made in life, so I make a change. I did make a change. And from punk, so I got into hardcore. So, and I started a band that called Second Combat in 1996 when I was 14. When I was 15 years old, I played in a band. And I was influenced by bands like um, Green Day, uh, The Offspring. What, what band did you grow up on 90s? What band did you grow up? Nirvana. So, yeah, Nirvana was uh, on that era. And Sex Pistols, you know, um, The Offspring, there's lots of bands going on. So, people like us, people like me, were, we were like, uh, you know, we were influenced, accidentally influenced by this kind of thing. So, I think this is normal in our society, in our community, in our kids, you know, uh, influenced by, by the TVs, by the movies that we, uh, you know, put it in our TVs and stuff. So, I had almost 10 releases for my band. So I believe, in our scene, we believe in DIY, do it yourself, because we don't believe those businessmen that uh, you know trying to produce a record label for us. We don't believe them. So we have a mindset that's saying that we can do this, you know? 
we can do this. We don't need them to uh, produce a record label for us, to you know, make money from our creation. So, so far, I had almost 10 releases using my, my own initiative, and one LP from Switzerland, and one EP from Netherlands, one split EP with Hungry Band, and one split from France, and involving six compilation all over the world by doing it by myself. <laughs> so, so I believe that everyone, everyone can do this. Believe in DIY, do it yourself. This is what we imply in the punk and hardcore scene because we can be our own businessman, we can be our own manager, we can do everything by our own. So we need to discover that in ourselves, you know. So um, I had toured almost 20 countries and including European continent. We do everything by ourselves from booking, uh, from, um, from driving the van to uh, countries. We did it everything by ourselves. There's no tour manager. There's no manager. We don't, we don't have manager. We learn to be a manager for ourselves. So this is what punk and hardcore teaches. We take control. You know, there's no uh, superiority of uh, people who can control you. So this is what we, d we learn in the hardcore scene. 1999, I discovered Straight Edge. And I realized I don't need to, to smoke or take drugs or to be, co uh, to be cool and to love punk and hardcore music. I don't need that. So I learned that in 1999. And Straight Edge had changed my life forever. I found it, it's a cool movement, and I started to follow. It started in 90, the movement started in 1982 by a band that called Minor Threat. By the time, in the 80s, there's lots of bands were into drugs, or promoting drugs, or promoting partying and stuff. Like, um, I don't need to mention, but you know the rock scene, uh, Get High, you know, rock and roll, Die Young, uh, Live Fast and Die Young, that kind of motto, that kind of a spirit that they've been, you know, uh, putting on kids like us. So, but there are other bands that are saying different things. They say, hey, let's go straight edge, you know, we are badass, but we don't need drugs. We don't need uh, alcohol to be cool, you know, we can be cool, we can play this music, you know, without, without these substances that, you know, these kind of things. And I got inspired by this movement, and I wrote to all the bands from, uh, from overseas saying that, hey, you know, take me, be part of your movement. So I wrote, by the age of 16 years old, 19 years old, I wrote to people overseas with my broken English, you know, for I, I learned, I learned to write, I learned to speak, I learned to sing in English from these bands. So I, I have from uh, people that send me overseas uh, with records and LPs and CDs they send me. And uh, I learned from that, not from the uh, school textbook. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there is something that we can learn from these kids, from people like me. You can learn something from the here. So we can teach this. And uh, this is Straight Edge. Straight Edge, um, sometimes uh, they call it the SXE. SXE, Straight XE. It's a subculture and sub uh, genre of hardcore punk whose adherents refrain from using alcohol, tobacco, and other recreational drugs. This is what we uh, mark acts on our hands to show that we are, um, you know, part of this movement because we don't want to say to people, say that, hey, you cannot smoke here, you cannot do drugs here, you cannot take alcohol. People don't like that. Kids don't like that. So I also, when my ma mother say that, hey, you cannot smoke here. So uh, I don't like that. My parents, my, my school teachers. So. so this is what we do, say that. Hey, let's, on your, uh, let's join us. We're straight edge. We're cool. We're badass. So this is what we're saying to kids. So because they, they love to become part of a group, you know. So we created that group. So the world had created that group. So now we're in the movement that we call it straight edge. Don't drink. We don't drink. We don't smoke. We don't do drugs. 
All right? So beside than that, it's just not stop in music. It's also in fashion, in art, in writing. So we created the fashion. So I have had to create my own fashion. So this is my own design. So we created a watch. Um, beside than that, we have lots of things. We have buttons, we have bangles, we have uh, even a bottle for school kids, you know, to carry to schools. So we created, we imply the ideas to to our products. So make sure people are cool when they're wearing it, you know. So these are these are the famous people who are in the straight edge scene right now. And there are almost 500 straight edge bands around the world since 1982, including Anti-Flag, AFI. You know this band? AFI, Rise Against. And um, Haley Williams from Paramore, she's straight edge now. <laughs> Andy Hurley from Fall Out Boy. And Arch Enemy, so some people of you listen to uh, punk rock and metalcore, so you know this band uh, from Arch Enemy. James Hetfield of Metallica, he's also now reborn as Straight Edge. He has a uh, tattoo Straight Edge, and uh, picked up by wrestler CM Punk. So you know this guy, right? CM Punk, you do wrestling at home, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So CM Punk had picked up the idea, and also C.G. Wilson, he's a baseball player, it's very good. And now the idea had become mainstream, not underground anymore. So if not, I'm not be staying, uh, standing here to talk to you guys about my underground movement. So, so this is, uh, you know, um, I'm revealing the secret. So now you know the quotes. So every time you see a, a kid wearing a watch with an axe, so they mean, you know, these kids are into straight edge, and it's very good. And uh, so far, there are seven bands from Malaysia I recruited as a straight edge, and we're looking for more. So if, if you guys into band, into music, do something that is uh, something that is cool, into fashion, that kind of things, I would like to recruit you. You know, to be to to spend to send a message to the kids. Hey, we're cool. We're badass. But we're making a change. So I need this kind of people. And um, these are the kids in, that I recruited. And now they used to smoke, they used to smoke weed and stuff whenever at shows, pass out at shows. So, but now they are clean. Um, they are straight edge now. And um, so my, my intention is to go to find this kind of kids. And, uh, I have this association called the Drug Free Youth Association. Uh, it's mean to help young people who are at risk falling into negative influence and habits. So far, people are at risk are lost and needed guidance. They are willing to try anything. I care about them because I see my past in them. I used to be one in the crowd, I used to be part of that group. So now I'm making a change because drug free, because uh, straight edge is not just um, saying that, hey, I'm drug free, that's it. You know, that's it, I finish. But straight edge is about going out to the crowd and saying that, hey, we're straight edge, we're true till death. And this is commitment for life. This is not just for one time. This is not for one day, not for one moment. This is for life. When you commit to straight edge, so that, so that means it's for death, you know? I know some of you would like to try, some of you have tried smoking alcohol and that kind of stuff, and, and then your dad caught you and said, oh dad, I'm gonna stop this, no, no problem, and stop it. And then you, a while, you're gonna try it again. So that's not the way it goes for us. So we straight edge, we say it's a commitment for life. This is what we're doing. And, and I want to help these boys. I want to help these kids. So my association provides a space for people to enjoy punk and hardcore music, medical, what kind of bands that you are playing right now, and while staying clean. I want you to stay clean, okay? And uh, Straight Edge has enabled me to do all of, all of that. 
positively impacting people by making it cool, keeping it appealing to the audiences. You know, we want to make it cool. We don't want to be like uh, Pee Wee Herman, you know, like nerd saying. So we, you know, we want to be badass, but at the same time, you know, show these people that we are cool, we are clean, we are sober. We want, we want make, uh, we want to make people understand and uh, believe in us. So because before this, we always get read, we always get the. Uh, stigma of our society saying that hey these kids are having no future you know that's uh, wasting time this these kids are garbages so i always had that comments from people saying that people in hardcore band and hardcore scene are garbages so this is trash they don't have any future but they are wrong we are making a change in our community so we are singing differently, we are writing differently, we are singing differently, not like the normal bands that you heard in the radio, in the national TV, this is different from the MTV. And let me tell you a short story um, about a band, about uh, a scene of kids, uh, whereby in 1980, it's a band called the Teen Idols, the Teen Idols. They were scheduled to play at um, San Francisco Mabuhai Gardens. These are the first kids who started Straight Edge. And, but when they arrived, the club management discovered that they were underage. They were 13 years old, they were 17 years old. And uh, the club management wouldn't let them in, wouldn't let them play. So. They were a uh, legal drinking age by that time. They was 18 years old. By the uh, age of 18, below, you cannot enter a club. And um, the club actually uh, shout at a kid, saying that, you're a kid, you got to get out from here. And then the band say that, hey, come on, let us play. We're just a kid. We're just 13 years old. We don't want to buy a beers we don't want to buy we don't want to do alcohol here, around here so all right and at the bounce say all right i'm gonna let you play but in one in one promise that you will not buy any alcohol you will not smoke in my club and they start to compromise a little bit and and then the management said that I have to mark an X on your hands to show that you cannot buy any alcohol in my club. And then the boys say that, yeah, okay, no problem. Now we just want to play in the band. We just want to have some fun. We just want to jump around. And then uh, they mark the X, the black X on the hands of the kids. And then, and then it become a movement. So after the, after the show, the kids go back to their, uh, to their place, Washington, D.C. They're from Washington, D.C. And uh, they said to their friends, hey, hey um, we can play the next club by having X on our hands. They don't need to mark an X on our hands, so we can do it. And then they propose it to the next club, to the next club, to the next club. And they say, hey, we already got the X on our hands, so we don't want to buy your beer. So we just want to play in the band. So... It become a phenomena. So lots of kids, lots of bands started to follow. Bands like Seven Seconds, The Black Flag, SSD, it become big in Washington DC. If you live in Washington DC, you must know uh, this history, right? You don't know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm telling you this history. It's like a history lesson for punk rocker. So the mark soon become associated with straight edge lifestyle it can be used by drinking establishment to wrote on a pattern under the drinking age, regardless of their views towards drugs and alcohol. So the X had already implied everywhere, every world. So even here in Malaysia, so we started to follow the movement. And uh, right now the teen idols are very famous, so they started this. And then, uh, so far, 500 bands have followed and thousands of kids have become straight edge just because of one lyrics. So I'm going to end this with this lyrics called straight edge. 
I'm a person just like you, but I got better things to do than sit around and suck my head, hang out with the living dead, snort white shit up my nose, pass out at the shows. I don't even think about speed. That is something I don't need. I've got straight edge. That's it. Thank you.